and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, just welcome. My name is Rusty, and this is my channel where I talk about my favorite horror movies. Or my favorite movies, mostly horror. Every once in a while, I just like to mess that up just for the hell of it. And my favorite music, mostly metal. And welcome to day five. Five of found footage week and this was a very pleasant surprise Pre pleasant surprise this was a very pleasant surprise um aside from as above so below all seven of the films in this spotlight week uh found footage festival have been first time watches for me and this one is no different it was a first time watch and this shot up into my top five found footage movies of all time without a doubt and that is 2013's afflicted now if you do not have this or have not seen this boy are you missing out this blew my mind it was so good so afflicted was released in 2013 it was directed by Derek Lee and Cliff Prowse. It was written by Derek Lee and Cliff Prowse. And it stars Derek Lee and Cliff Prowse and Michael Gill. Now, this movie opens with um, Cliff and Derek at a party announcing their trip around the world. He's been wanting to do it all of his life. They've been friends since they were teenagers. And uh, they were going, they're going to take a trip around the world. Cliff is going to document with all of his um, photography equipment because they've been making these little films since they were kids. And so, yeah, they're going to document this for a website. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. And it doesn't work out well. So, um, Derek's brother doesn't want him to go. We, we figured that out. And it's because Derek has some kind of, like, brain problem. It's sort of like a, a very high risk of an aneurysm or something could take place. Um, so, Derek does have this health condition. But he's going to go anywhere anyway. Um and they take off and they go and we arrive in Spain where they hang out with their friends Udo and Zach or his friend Udo and Zach um, they party and they have a good time it's a music group um, they are doing um, a gig there so they go to the show then they get um, Derek you know they're like needling him to get a girl get a girl find a nice girl so they do go to some clubs and he does end up finding this girl to talk to and he takes them he he leaves with the girl and um cliff and the two friends they hang out taking down the equipment and everything and then they decide that a big prank that people like to play I don't know, it must be a straight thing or something. Do y'all like to do this? But supposedly it's a, a popular prank that if a, if a girl is fisting to get sexed or a boy is fisting to get sexed, that you go and interrupt them um, as a prank. I stopped trying to figure you people out a long time ago. But... Um, so they do do that you know they're like okay we're gonna go and like kick open the door in the middle of whatever they're doing and and prank them and f piss them off freak them out so they go back and they do that they you know jerk open the door but she's not there the windows open the dude is laying there um in the bed Derek is laying there in the bed he's got this big blood coming across his face and a big thing coming out of his shoulder and they wake him up and they fix him up and they're like where did she go because her purse is still sitting there as 
as is her clothing. So he's all right, though. You know, he refused to go to the doctor because if they find something else out, you know, they might not let him leave or, you know, and he just wants to do this trip. So they bandage him up and they leave, you know, and he, he doesn't know what happened. He just says that he took her back to the room. When they got to the room, he walked in the door and she hit him and knocked him out. And he didn't know nothing until they woke him up. So they move on. They move on to Italy. We're up to like day 10. Um, he's sleeping a great deal. Um, and Cliff is like, you know, wondering why are you sleeping so much and stuff like that. Um, they go out to a restaurant to eat where when he tries to eat, he disgustingly vomits all over the place when he tries to eat. It's been days since he ate. So, um, they go on a tour of a vineyard in Italy. Um, and while this uh, vineyard guy is taking them on the tour, they see his little pig and they he takes them and shows them the vines and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, Derek, you notice that Derek's skin is like getting really red. And then he starts, you know, like yelling, I've got to go. I've got to get out, get down off this hill. I've got to get. And he's like little smoke is coming off of him and he has to run down the hill and get into this dark room and then he's like got like blisters and stuff and that's when I go isn't this a zombie found footage film because this don't look like zombie shit this looks like vampire shit <laughs> you know I'm like, he can't eat food, he's sleeping a lot, and he starts getting burnt in the sun. Well, what? what? What's up? You know, so I started suspecting that this was some vampire stuff going on here, which I did not know that. So, Cliff is, of course, getting very nervous about all of this um, because he won't go to the doctor and he won't quit this trip and go home. Um, so Derek gets angry at him when he catches him talking to Derek's brother about, I don't know what you want me to do. I can't get him to stop and I can't get him to go see a doctor. So what do you want me to do about it? You know, I mean, I can't get him to do anything. So Derek comes in and catches them. And when he does, he like puts his fist through this masonry wall. We're not talking sheetrock here, right? He like knocks this whole big thing out of it. Now, they start kind of broing about that. Oh my God, you're a superhero. You've got super strength. And um, so they go out and they like do like little tests in the road. Um, he's like, starts running. He like gets on us his scooter and he gets the scooter up to 60 miles an hour and Derek is staying right with him. So he's got like this super strength and um, super speed. And I'm like, well, what the fuck is this? Is it like Superman or a vampire? What's going on here? You know what I mean? So I thought that was like really cool. And of course, like I'm really invested in this movie now. <laughs> so, um, he can run at 60 miles an hour. He, he takes out his contacts, though. His eyes start hurting, and his contact, his eyes are like gray, turn to like, you know, glowy, grayish kind of thing. So he really starts freaking out, and Cliff is like begging him to go to the hospital, to go to hospital. So they do go to hospital, and right as they get to the front of the hospital, Cliff is busy. You know, Derek's walking over there. And Cliff is busy with the cameras, and he does. And so this car nearly hits him, and the, of course the dude that's in the car is like extremely pissed. Like, what the fuck are you doing in the middle of the road? So he gets out and starts like fucking with with Cliff. Like, you know, I'm gonna beat your ass and stuff like that. Um, 
and this other dude comes running and then Derek like knocks him like 40 feet into this it just puts a big giant dent in the side of the car how that dude lived through it I don't know but you know and he grabs the other one and throws him over the car um so now Cliff runs up sees if the guy's alive he says yes and they take off so that has them freaked out this is when they start thinking what I was thinking and that is like dude I think you're a vampire now you know how the fuck did this happen and that's when Derek like showed him he's like that was a bite now I remembered like back when it happened when they found him I was like that looks like a bite in his in his shoulder so they believed that this person this girl Aubrey um, Audrey that she's the one who did it you know so they're like okay now what what caused him to think that was because he's of course uploading all of these videos on the website and one of the commenters had said dude did Derek just lick the blood off of his hands at the hospital at hospital Cliff noticed that and like looked closer and you could see him like licking and eating the blood off his hands that's what made Cliff think I think you're a vampire so Derek kind of believes this too you know so they start testing the theory um, he goes and gets cow blood from a butcher but it makes him puke now you have to realize Derek is getting more and more Nosferatu feral acting with every hour that goes by so they try to go he's going to go and lure a dog but they don't get the chance because there's no feral dogs every all the dogs have owners so they're scared to cause trouble so they end up he ends up going to that winery and he kills that man's pig right because maybe it just needs to be fresh so that doesn't work either he pukes that all over the place and he's still becoming feral so he has to face the upsetting truth and that is that it has to be human blood so they try to go and get blood from a blood bank but of course the people are like wanted their ID and they're already wanted you know from the shit that happened in front of the hospital they're already wanted and stuff like that so um, they try to <laughs> Derek hijacks an ambulance hoping that there would be blood in the ambulance you know and the poor Italian lady she does you know she's working on this guy and she doesn't know what he's saying um, and when she does try to finally figure out that he wants blood you know she's like we don't carry blood on the ambulance you know and I was like worried that he was going to like attack them but he didn't so they end up jumping out so now they're like really getting on the radar for Interpol or something you know because that shit at the hospital um, Derek's brother is calling like whether you know and plus you have to remember keep in mind they're uploading all of these videos this is found footage remember so they're uploading all of these videos onto the website so you have people calling the law right <laughs> yeah so um, they don't have any blood either now they go back to the room and Cliff that was a scary thing but Cliff wakes up in the middle of the night and he's like hearing some kind of weird feral sound you know and he looks down at the side of his bed and man does Derek look fucked up in that night vision 
You know what I mean? Them eyes and stuff. That was a fucked up scene. That scared the shit out of me. I saw that shit in the middle of the night. You might as well go ahead and buy the daisies from my grave. Because that was like, wow. <coughs> so. Um, Cliff finds him feral. And uh, he goes into a seizure and stuff like that. Uh, we're up to day 17 now. And Cliff decides to cut his own wrist. Not in the kill yourself way, but in the get some blood way, and put some in a glass and is going to go and feed it to his friend, Derek. And I'm like, okay. But Derek's not in the room. Derek's gone. The window's open. So Cliff is out there looking everywhere for him, and then he thinks. What about that winery? So he goes back to that winery. And he's looking around that winery. And I kept thinking, yeah, he went back there to kill that man. You know. The the winer guy. Is that what they call a... The winer? <laughs> the winery owner? What is a person who makes wine? A winer? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just... I'll have to Google that. Um, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's what I thought he had done. And um, he finds him in the room. And that was real sad, though, because it's too late. He's completely went feral now. And he attacks Cliff. Cliff drops the camera. And then Cliff tries to crawl out in front. And then Derek gets on him, flips him over like with super strength. And grabs his head up and just rips it straight out, you know, and, you know, it's like sucks him dry. And so next thing you know, you see Cliff in front. He's like all cleaned up now and he looks better. He looks kind of back to normal other than the fact that you just killed your best childhood friend and drank him. Um, so he's like on the footage and he's like, I'm, I'm so sorry about what I did. And then he sticks a shotgun in his mouth before you can look away. He sticks a shotgun in his mouth and just like, I did not see that coming to that disturbingly, disturbingly realistic. Because he blows the whole like back of his head out and falls forward and this like, this stuff's hanging yeah, I didn't see that coming. And then I remember, like, this was last night when I watched it, and I could remember, like, sitting there going, you know what, if you hadn't known that was coming, I'd have looked away. Am I, let me, let me, let me self-assess. Am I disturbed? I think I'm disturbed. But I'm not going to have a panic attack. I'm not going to freak out. That was gross. Are you going to be all right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I had to self-assess because that was a disturbing scene. <laughs> I didn't see it coming. But what was even more disturbing is that as he lays there with this big hole in his head, then all of a sudden he jumps up and squeals and runs. And you're like, okay. Scare me twice inside of 10 seconds there. Why don't you? So, it doesn't kill him. And then the next, you know, so we, did we change day? It's like day 22 now. So, you know, it doesn't kill him. And he's like, how can you not blow most of your brains out? And it not... So, he's talking to the camera. And then he, like, holds up a mirror, right? He holds up, like, a mirror and is showing the camera how his head just healed right back up. That's why I thought this was a zombie film because of all of the the stuff on the back of his head. That's actually the scars and the veins and all from where his head healed back up from blowing his own brains out. So that's what tricked me into thinking this was about zombies and instead it's a vampire. So um, 
he knows now that there's only one thing to do, and that is he has got to go and find this Audrey woman, right? And it reminded me of Interview with a Vampire, like the Vampire Lestat. If you, if you know Lestat's backstory, that's exactly what happened to him. You know, um, Magnus took Lestat from the theater. Because, you know, Lestat was married to his boyfriend, Nikki. And they were in a theater troupe. And Magnus fell in, Magnus the vampire fell in love with Lestat and then kidnapped him and took him back to his castle and turned him into a vampire and then promptly went and emulated himself in a bonfire, leaving Lestat completely, what am I? Okay, that's this. That's the same situation. Because Derek has been turned into a vampire, but without any advice, right? <laughs> now that you're a vampire, this is how you have to live. No, it's just like you're a vampire. I'm glad you figured that out. What the fuck you do now? So that was kind of interesting. And it's, it's the reason why Lestat's such an asshole is because he lived, for, you know, he had never even met another vampire until, what, hundred years or something I mean he didn't even know what he was so um, yeah so he realized he knows he can't go into the Sun he tests that you know you can't go outside he's wanted by Interpol and Interpol shows up and knocks on the door and it's like you have to come with us well first of all you ain't getting him out there in that Sun so, not to mention he's a vampire. <laughs> so, that was a cool scene because he, like, throws them all over the place. He gets out a window, uh, the, the famous window scene where he jumps from, like, seven stories down to the ground. Um, he's running. He's getting shot. Um, nothing is hurting. Well, it's hurting him, but it's not killing him. He manages to get away from him, from them. Um, and of course he's lost everything, uh, because he only got out of there with the camera bag that he's using, the camera bag and the clothes on his back. So they have his, they have his ID, they have everything. So he knows he's fucked. No money, no, no. So he's got to get back to Paris, right, to try to find this girl. Um. He does manage to make it back to Paris. And then he remembers that all of her stuff was left in that room when they left. So he goes back to the hotel and he asks him if there's a lost and found. Because he wants her phone. And sure enough, her stuff is in the lost and found. And that includes her phone. So he has found him a little lair that's got electricity and like the basement of a warehouse or something. It's got electricity, it's got water that he can tap into, so that's his little lair. And um, and now that he has this phone, he's going to use it in a plan to try to find her. However, as he tries to leave with it, he turns around and his brother is standing there. Not only is his brother standing there, but a shitload of Interpol cops are standing outside. So, because of course his brother's been watching his videos. He's been documenting all of this in, in um, what did he say, in Legacy of Cliff. Cliff wanted everything documented. So he's putting all this shit on the web, all of this horrible stuff. People have literally watched a dude turn into a vampire on video, right? Of course, most of them aren't going to believe it, but you know what I'm saying. It's all true. So, he's like, why did you come here? What are you doing? You have no idea what's going on. Big, giant, cool, you know, fight scene. Um, the cops try to get him, run, run, run again. He's jumping from roof to roof. One cop, he tries to save the cop who was on the roof, but the cop turns around and, like, um, falls and he tries to save him, but he can't. So now he knows there's a dead cop on his hand. So there's no going back. What he 
finds out later is there was no going back anyway, right? So he gets back to his lair. He cleans himself all up. And then what he does is he sends a text to every single number on that phone. Like going, meet me. What he's hoping to do is find someone who knows Aub Audrey, thinking it's Audrey that that texted them. It's, it's a good plan. So this dude shows up at the park and is like waiting for him like, you know, where are you, Audrey? You know, and instead he he doesn't show up. So he goes and Derek follows him. So he follows him back into this really run-down apartment complex. And when he gets into the room, he finds, like, pictures of Aubrey. Like, as a little kid. And they're, like, those pictures from, like, 1950. You know? And he sees, like, a picture of Aubrey. And this was obviously, like, a class photograph. Like, a yearbook photograph kind of portrait and you can tell from her hairstyle and the black and white that this was like a 1955 photo so this bitch is like 50 60 70 years old she looks 22 so um he follows that guy back now unfortunately for him and this was bad luck on his part the the cops raid that guy's apartment that Maurice guy where he's got it he raids um because he's brought him back he doesn't raid his apartment he's brought him back to his lair but the cops have found his lair and he's tied up the guy and he's going to make the guy give him information on public on the web uh filming it you're going to give me information or we're just going to see what happens when I turn again. About that time, though, here comes, um, here comes the SWAT, I guess what you would call the Interpol version of SWAT. So he comes by and there's this big SWAT attack. That was some fantastic shit because, let me tell you, he kills them they shoot him I know 50 fucking times and he ends up they th they shoot him till he thinks he's dead right and then he pops back up and all of this is being recorded you know so we're seeing it all and they pop him like 50 they fill him like full of 50 fucking bullets and they think he's dead and yes somebody's walking down my road at three o'clock in the morning and I'm like it's a little unnerving so they think he's dead but he jumps back up and he like attacks the shit out of them beats them all manages to get away again it was a fantastic fight scene you, you've got to see it so after he manages to do all of that gets away he gets another phone call on Audrey's phone. So I guess Audrey may have done it, called him. So he goes to this warehouse where he sets up um, the cams up for this meeting. And Audrey shows up and they fight. And when they're through fight, she she stops and talks to him after she get, teaches him a couple of lessons. She stops and talks to him. Um, and she's genuinely concerned, you know, and, you know, she's like, I can beat your ass. You need to just calm down. Now, you know, he's like, I can't do this. There's got to be a cure. There's got to be something going on. You know, something that can be done. And she's like, it was a mistake. You know. She's like, look. And you really end up liking her. Kind of. You know. Because she's like, look. Okay. 
if something could be done about this, don't you think I would have done it? If I could kill myself and, and, and it be done, don't you think I would have done it? If there was a cure, don't you think I would have taken it? There is no cure, and you cannot die. It, the blood, you cannot die, and your body will not let you. So you have two choices, okay? Because if there was a cure, I would have done it. If I could kill myself, I would have too. And I would never create another and put them through what I am. You know, you are a mistake. And he's like, but I can't do this. I can't kill someone every two weeks. And she's like, every two weeks? No, you dumbass. You have to eat every four to five days. That's what you have to do. You must feed or you will go feral. Your body will not let you starve. So either you do what you have to do or you will go feral. Now then this is when it really made a lot of sense because she said, you know, you've got two choices. Okay. If you do not feed, then you will go feral. And without your permission, your body will go and kill people. So you have no choice. There is nothing you can do. The only choice you have is either you choose who you kill or you let your body choose who you kill. And there's a difference. That's the only choice you've got. You can choose who you kill. So, he asked her then, like, well, why did you choose me? And she told him that he touched her with the sob story, which is what his friends had told him to do when he could not find it, get pick up a girl at those bars at the beginning of this movie. He told them, you know, they told him, look, tell them that you have a brain tumor, <laughs> that you have an aneurysm thing, which he did have a health condition, but it wasn't a brain tumor. But they're like, tell them that. Give them the sob story and you'll pick up a girl. So when he asked her, why did you choose me? And she was like, because your sob story worked, basically, is what she told him. She was like, you were dying, and I felt sorry for you, and you touched me in that moment, because normally I would have never made this mistake, which was to create another like me. So that kind of made you feel, like, sad, because her heart was in the right place, and she, she touched him. You know, he touched her. And she would have never bit him, you know. She would have never chose him as a victim. Um, because obviously, from the le lecture that she just gave him, obviously she does not um, kill innocent people. She probably just kills bad people. And so she, w his pickup line would not have worked had not he, you know, her, she touched, he touched her with the sob story and he was only doing it to get laid and instead he got turned into an immortal vampire. So that's kind of ironic. So, you know, you were dying and I thought I was being kind because you touched me. I'm sorry, but this is the way things are. So he records a video as a, you know, the, the last video of the web series, um, which is like a goodbye to his family. You know, that there's nothing that we can do now, um, but I can't be around you. Um, I can't explain everything, what you haven't seen on the web anyway. Um, but... 
I'm going away and you'll never see me again now. So he records this. He's obviously accepted his fate. And, you know, like Aubrey said, we get to see a video of a man hanging in like a his lair with a bag over his face. And he takes the bag off the guy's face. And he's like, um, the guy's like, please don't hurt me, you know, whatever. And he's like, is this your phone? Is this your phone? And the guy's like, yeah, this that's my phone. And then he shows him a video that the guy had taken on the phone of him raping a little, a little girl. A little girl. So, he said, I'm going to give you the chance, same chance you gave that little girl. And then he ripped his throat out. He let him go and then turned the lights off. And the, the cam's on night vision, and you get to see him get his throat ripped out. So obviously he has accepted his fate, and now he's only going to kill, you know, bad people, like Aubrey, like Audrey said. So I was stunned at how good this movie was. I was really stunned by the ending because that was fucking cool. Okay. The fight scenes are amazing. You know, and I did look up these directors and if I could talk to them, I'd be like, what happened to you dudes? I mean, this was 2013. It's got a very high rating on international movie database for a horror movie. And you never did shit. They literally, neither one of them has done shit. It says something about maybe some episodes of Ellen since this. I'm like, why haven't you made more movies? I don't know. I, I mean, that's a little, that was a little shocking to me for them to have just disappeared. But anyway, so the credits roll. And then right as you're, you know, I didn't turn it off, but, you know, the credits start rolling and then boom, there's this like scene. And I was like, wait, what? It's not over. <laughs> And there's a scene of these three kids with a cam. And, you know, you see these two girls and they're trying to break in this gate. And so they break into the gate and they go into this pool. And then he follows and he's like showing his face. So it's basically three teenage, three teenagers, a boy and two girls. And they break into what looks like sort of a mansion type place. And, I don't think they're doing anything criminal except trespassing. They want to swim in the pool is what they want to do. So they go in there and they're swimming in the pool. And when the other two get in, you know, one girl gets in and then these other two get in and that girl's gone and they can't find her. And then all of a sudden they start hearing this weird wild noise. And I was thinking to myself, well, that can't be Derek. I mean, they're just teenagers. They can't be like, I know he's not considering trespassing worthy of getting ripped to shreds by a vampire. So you're confused for a minute. You know, it's like, oh, well, is it Audrey? But she said she only kills bad people too. So this doesn't make any sense. And um, all of a sudden, you know, this other girl starts screaming and something grabs her and the dude starts running and he jumps over the fence and when he jumps over the fence and he lands on the other side there's one of the girls like her bodies or her body's like all ripped up you know and then he turns around and starts running and then it jumps up in front of him and it's a vampire it's cliff and cliff rips him to shreds and you're like, oh, man. So Derek, so he was alive. Derek thought he had killed Cliff, but he hadn't. And now he's fucking done without knowing it. The same thing that Audrey did. But Audrey knew it. Audrey... Audrey knew that he was going to turn into a vampire. She should have helped him. So she was a little bitch for that.
But Derek really doesn't know. He thought he had killed Cliff. He thought that's one of the things he was hiding from was, you know, the murder of his friend. But Cliff is alive and he's a vampire too. And it ended right there where you saw it. You know, and when it was over, I was just like, fuck yeah, that's a good goddamn movie. (laughs) And it immediately like shot into my top 10 vampire movies of all time. So, yeah, that and it got an 8.5 out of 10 to me from me, which got bumped up to a nine on International Movie Database because hell yeah (laughs) so if you have never seen afflicted maybe you're like me you don't know what it is i thought it was a zombie because of the picture i thought it was a zombie infection type found footage film i had no idea it was a vampire movie okay i had no idea and a cool vampire cool world building i would love to know about audrey I would love to know how many of them are there. Who is she? I would love to know Audrey. You know, what made her, how did she get turned? What made her decide to kill bad people? To live with what she had become? Because I could do that. You know me. You know me in vengeance. It's my third favorite, I mean, it's one of my three top favorite subgenres, right? Slashers, Killer Kids, and Vengeance. Death Wish, Brave, The Brave One, fuck yeah, Death Sentence. I love Vengeance. I Spit on Your Grave too. That's my top four right there. But, yeah, so, if I got turned, I could do that. I could do that. Rapists, serial killers, murders. We got some Dexter shit going on. (laughs) I could do that. I could do that as a vampire. Not as a human, because, you know, you'll get caught. But as a vampire. So, yeah, I would love to know more about this world. That's why I wonder what the hell happened to these directors. You know, this movie got, like, is, like, critically high-praised. And they're not dead because their bios would say so. So they're not dead. This is, what, 10 years old? How come you've not made a movie? How come you've not done a sequel? With the reception that this gets in the horror community, like from me, dude, we would definitely take a sequel. You know? I mean, I don't know. That movie is filmed so well. The fight scenes are so well. And the world building, the writing, that was excellent. You know, it was really good. It was a really, really good film. So that's Afflicted, day five of found footage. If you've not, if you have seen this, what do you think about it? If not, you really should. And I will see you in the next video. I have not seen those two either. They will be first time watches. So love you, miss you, bye bye. That is a great movie. Afflicted 2013. See you on the next. Always remember, never forget, you're a very special person. And I will see you on the flip side. No matter what anybody tells you, you're very special. Keep rocking hard. Keep screaming. But only when appropriate. And support indie horror and physical media. Love you. Miss you. Bye-bye.